Hey there, fellows. Look at what I got here on the hood of this car. This is a brake rotor. And that's aluminum. What's the connection? Well, it's pretty simple. We've gotten quite a few requests to make brake rotors or drums out of aluminum and see how they perform. In the immediate association that pops up is that aluminum is a soft metal. It heats up quick and it's quick to cool off. It's lightweight. It is soft, so you might see scoring, but not necessarily. We have tried aluminum brake pads, and you might recall how those behaved. It is quite a bit less durable than iron, and so it's hard to predict what might come out of this. And so, let's make us some aluminum brakes and see how they do. Let's get stuck right into it. We recast alloy rims into brake rotors. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so check this out. We've come to the test track, everything is looking good. We've got the cameras on there, the car is on fleek. And now we should do a couple of runs to work out where the car will stop on the stock rotors. We'll of course also take a temperature reading. Yeah, everything is pretty straightforward. I'm not quite sure what speed to get up to, but since we've chosen 80 kilometers an hour in the past, I mean, some cars can get up to 100 or even 200, but this one should be able to comfortably get up to 80. Crucially, our super precise race logic telemetry device is already in position, so let's do this. Stock brake rotors. I think right off the bat we can... Go for it! That's 80. Now it's 90. So we just got up to 90 kilometers an hour. Go ahead and take a reading, what do we got? 103. 103? You put down a cone to mark the stopping distance. Right. Come on. 90. 95. 100. Yeah, I locked them for a moment there. Right. I saw 160. 160? Holy cow. For brake temperature, but I was going 100. Right, so with a 10 kilometer difference in speed, we got a 10 meter difference in stopping distance. As for the temperature increase, it's blown past 150, with the brake rotors getting up to 160 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's install the aluminum brake rotors and see how well how they behave overall. Let me show you the aluminum rotors, guys. You would have seen us casting, machining them. And they look nice. We decided not to machine this part. That is not to make the metal any thinner. Otherwise, it's identical to the stock iron brake rotor. Though it is worth mentioning that this bevel is a bit different. It's not as pronounced, that's to ensure structural integrity. These are very light. But the point isn't in how much these weigh. 
The important thing is how they're going to perform their duties. That's what we want to find out. So check this out. Aluminum brake rotors by popular request. We've got them on the car and they're ready for testing. Let's do this. Brake in. They're actually behaving quite well. They even feel nice and smooth. They're all right. I do hear a sort of rubbing noise, but it's very quiet. It's barely even audible. This is going pretty well. What does the surface look like? I see scratches. Scratches! Well, that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, the entire surface seems to have been broken in. The pads are smooth, after all. And they're good on this side as well. There is a small inner portion that the pad isn't coming into contact with. But I can drive for a little bit more. Aluminum brake rotors. Here we go. That's 70, 80, 80. <laughs> yeah, this really didn't go very well, did it? 140. 140. And I was going 90 kilometers an hour. And brake operation has become kind of funny. I feel as if they haven't been broken in right. Because the car was... actually darting back and forth. I nearly hit the cones back there. So from 90 I stopped further than I did from 100 on the stock brakes. Yeah, I have a feeling the brakes haven't been properly broken in. I'm gonna have another go. Oh, right, better wait for them to cool. Already at 110. And that there's the benefit of aluminum. Quick to heat up and quick to cool. 70. 80. 90. Nope. No. Take a look at that. How much? 118, 120. 118, 120? So here's what happens. I hit the brake pedal. And I do keep in mind not to mash the pedal to keep the wheels from locking. So they engage, and after about 10 or maybe 15 meters, it feels as if they disengage. Feels as if the rotors overheat, and the brakes just become way less effective. And that's when you have to put enormous pressure onto the brake pedal. I've almost got it pushed into the floor. Understand? Or you don't. In any case, as you can see, the brakes have become less effective. Why so? Well, on the stock rotors from 90 kilometers an hour, there's where I came to a stop. That's about an 8 meter difference. Come on, 90. 100. Can't keep the pedal to the floor. Check that out. I was pushing the pedal hard, but to absolutely no avail. There was the initial bite, but then they stopped working. You see anything? Yep. How much? 134. 134? They're not even getting that hot. I don't really get... why the brake fade is so extreme. I'm guessing there's friction material fused to the rotor? Is the rotor black? No? Wow, is aluminum so low friction? Let me try that again, I'm in a bit of disbelief. 
<laughs> Try again, my ass. First, I need to wait for them to cool down. That is a must. Ninety. I didn't see a hundred because I didn't get above 98, but that's okay. But then the two odd kilometers did make a difference. Because last time I stopped way over there. Holy cow. Anyway, what's the rating? 142. 142, so the temperature is staying about the same. What condition are the rotors in? Pinstriped. I want to see what they look like. Oh my. They have taken a pounding. Check this out, guys. On the stock rotors, the car came to a stop way back there. It did so quickly, effectively, and just well overall. But when... Using aluminum rotors, braking performance, as we just saw during this experiment, was severely degraded. The car was actually slowing down for the first few meters. But then it's is as if they suddenly overheat. They fade into oblivion and the car just keeps plowing forward. I mean, just look at the difference. So those are the results. Now I suggest we go ahead and remove them to see what sort of condition they are in currently. Now that we're done with the testing. Okay, let's have a look. We've removed them, and here's what they look like. Yeah, these definitely have some grooves in them, as they would. But I was expecting these to get severely worn down, which isn't the case at all. You stop a couple of times and they're shiny once again. The wear is even, but one thing I don't understand is why the brakes just cease to work. But these don't look at all distorted, I mean, you might remember how we used aluminum pads, and those literally got stuck to the iron. The metal would get stretched and disfigured, not the case here. These... Honestly, don't even look that bad. If anything, they're pretty good. There is somewhere, but it's not horrible by any means. But then again, these didn't see too many intense stops from high speeds. So lots of scoring, but no extreme wear or metal stretching out. And I don't quite know what to make of it. Let us know in the comments why you think the brakes stop working. Because I don't know what's going on. And that does it for this experiment. By popular request, we've made a set of aluminum brake rotors. Though some people asked for drums, we decided to go with rotors. And they work well at lower speeds, but their performance at high speeds is definitely lacking. And that's all I got for you. You saw it all for yourselves. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment. That's all I got for you. Catch you later.